by the time you finish this session, we want you to feel fully equipped to be able to start trading in derivatives. So now I'll hand over to Brian, over to you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to start with a, a quick recap of uh, what we went through last week uh, so that uh, we can have a good uh, understanding and uh, by the end of the session, we should be able to, to take advantage of these opportunities that the market uh, offers us. So uh, just quickly, uh, derivatives, as we mentioned last time, uh, these are financial instruments whose characteristics and value depend on an underlying asset. And uh, for our case, uh, the underlying asset will be the single stock futures, the index futures, and the mini index futures. So uh, in our example that we went through uh, last, last week, um, uh, we had Janet who wanted to purchase uh, 5,000 uh, shares of Safaricom uh, in March uh, 2022. Also, we, we were using Peter as an, uh, an investor at NSC through Triple uh, X Capital, who currently owns uh, 10,000 shares of Safaricom. And you are able to illustrate how the two of them may be able to transact either directly or through the exchange. So the derivatives exchange uh, is called uh, Next, and it's a fully owned subsidiary of the NSE. So the available futures we have uh, Safaricom, KCB, Equity, EABL, BAT, and ABSA. Uh, for the index futures, we have the NSE 25 share index and the mini NSE 25 share index. So the difference between uh, the index and the mini index uh, is uh, the multiplier of uh, 100 versus 10 for the uh, NSE uh, 25, mini 25. So that means uh, buying an index, a mini index is equivalent of buying uh, 10 shares of each of the constituent companies of the, of the index. Whereas for the single stock features, uh, it would be equivalent to buying uh, 1,000. So trading-wise, there's two ways uh, an individual can uh, access the market. So there's direct market access and uh, broker execution. And we shall be able to demonstrate uh, how a potential client would be able to access the market through uh, direct market access. Uh, this is how the market looks like, and we shall be able to see that shortly. So we went through the market structure and the different layers. So there's uh, clients, then uh, there are trading members. These are the brokers, then the clearing members, uh, for example, Cockbank, and uh, then there's the NSC acting as the clearing member. No, act, acting as the exchange, the central counterparty. We have the fees, the fee structure for the market. And uh, as you can see, they're extremely low, uh, just 0.17% for the single stock futures and 0.14% uh, for the index futures versus uh, an industry average on the uh, normal market of uh, about 2%, 2.1%. Again, the concept of uh, leverage, as we discussed, leverage is uh, simply the use of borrowed money to invest. This means uh, not having to put up uh, the full amount to transact. The amount you do have to put up is, is known as margin. And, uh, in our act example, we were able to see uh, the difference uh, between the house margin, initial margin, additional margin, and variation margin. So I'd like, uh, again, to spend a bit of time here. Uh, this is uh, the hypothetical transaction uh, between uh, uh, Janet and Peter uh, on, uh, on Safaricom uh, for, the, for the contract March 22. So uh, supposing, uh, Janet walked into AIB Axis uh, with the uh, Kenya shillings uh, 50,000. Uh, what would be the different uh, transactions and uh, what, what would be her balance at the end of the day? So uh, the AIB Axis would retain house margin at 10% of the deposit. This would translate to 5,000, leaving her with uh, 45,000 available uh, for trading. Mm, she intends to purchase uh, five contracts of Safaricom. 
uh, 17 March 22 contract. So the initial margin for this uh, uh, contract is 5,000 shillings, which translates to a cost of 25,000. Uh, additional margin, this is collected by the clearing member, and it's 10% of the initial margin. This translates to uh, a cost of 2,500. And uh, there's a transaction cost of 0.17% uh, uh, of the share price. So uh, coming to Kenya shillings 357. So uh, after deducting all this, her balance now is uh, available for trading is uh, 17,143. Now, uh, supposing uh, the price uh, drops from uh, Kenya shillings 42 to Kenya shillings 40, at uh, the end of the year, th 31st of December. What would this uh, translate to for, for, for Janet? This would be a loss of 10,000 shillings uh, given by a loss of two shillings times uh, the five contracts times the 1,000 uh, contracts, per, 1,000 shares uh, per contract. So it would leave her with a balance of 7,143. Uh, when it comes uh, upon expiry on 17th of March, let's assume the price has recovered and uh, the price is now at 43 shillings. Uh, what would be the effect of this? So uh, the variation margin would be 15,000 given by the difference between 43 and 40 and uh, times the number of contracts times the number of shares per contract. So of, uh, upon contract expiry, as uh, I, I, I indicated previously, uh, you get back your initial margin and additional margin. So uh, given that the contract has expired, there would be no transaction cost uh, at this point. So uh, her balance at that point would be 49,643. Uh, if she chose to withdraw her money the next day, having achieved uh, what she wanted, uh, we would reimburse her the uh, house margin, bringing her total to 54,643, which translates to a profit of uh, 4,643 over what she walked in with. Um, I'd, I'd welcome uh, questions at this point. All right, as you write your questions regarding what Brian has just gone through, uh, Ian is asking, do brokers issue leverage facilities for their clients per their request, as long as the client is able to make the margin payments? In our example here, uh, for, uh, the client would have to put up uh, 25,000 initial margin uh, for a contract of uh, 1,000 Safaricom shares at 42 uh, shillings. So uh, if she had uh, gone to the market, uh, if she had traded in the normal uh, market, she would have had to pay 42,000 shillings uh, to be able to, to trade uh, 1,000 shares. And the initial margin here is 5,000 shillings. So the difference between 5,000 and 42,000 is what uh, is referred to as leverage. Okay, so she only needs the 5,000 instead of the 40. Yeah, she only needs 5,000 for the 1,000 uh, uh, shares, per se, quote unquote shares, versus uh, in the normal market should be required to have uh, the full 42,000 plus uh, the charges. All right, and uh, for any price change that occurs in the duration of the contract, is one always charged to the variation margin? Yes, so uh, the, the, this market uh, settles daily. So there's a daily mark to market, which is uh, the variation margin. So uh, in this example, uh, we assumed that the price was uh, uh, stationary between uh, uh, 1st October and 31st uh, December. This could have been the next day uh, if the price is at 40 and uh, then there'd be that negative 10. And the next day the price could have been at 43. So by 3rd of uh, October, all these transactions could have occurred. All right. And any, any, any price change uh, translates directly to Pendel. There's no paper profit or paper loss uh, as, as is on the, on the normal market. All right. And um, someone is asking what happens if the price dips to 30? 
so that's why we have uh, these mechanisms that the initial margin house margin and additional margin so as uh, the price uh, gets uh, goes against the client uh, first it would uh, deplete uh, the margin left in the account through variation margin and uh, after that uh, there would be a margin call so the client would be required uh, either to top up to top up the account if the client is unable to top up the account then uh, we retain uh, the, the right to close out the position by close out the position you mean uh, so if uh, taking the opposite so if this client uh, was long uh, we would uh, go short so if it, if that bought would sell if that sold would buy okay and uh there's a question if you sub do you subject a top up to the house margin in case of a margin call uh, we try to keep it at 10 percent and uh the risk uh, uh parameters calculated by ourselves in the bank so which would uh, indicate uh, the riskiness of the client so it will be system generated okay so if it goes uh, what what are you trying to keep at ten percent? Sorry. Uh, ten percent of deposit. Oh, okay. House. The house margin. All right. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions. Or oh, there's one in the chat. Uh, does it mean that I get five times the shares I would have gotten in the normal market at the same price? For for this example, it would not be five times. It would be. Uh, 42 uh, divided by 5,000, about eight times. So because it's eight times, you can see how, how quickly uh, a small uh, change in price uh, can cause a big uh, uh, profit or equally a big loss. All right, and is the house margin adjusted according to the risk of the client? For now, uh, it's static, but uh, we're trying to see the because as, as a client trades more, uh, we, we can be able to have a better risk profile of the client. So it would not be prudent for a risky client and a less risky client to face the same uh, house margin. So that's something we definitely are looking at. And uh, I guess uh, that can be discussed. All right, great. Uh, maybe we can move on. So account opening and funding. Uh, given that the next market is different from the spot market, uh, we cannot use the normal CDC account. You'd have to open a new one. So you just fill a form and uh, provide the required uh, KYC documents. Uh, our front office and compliance team will be happy to process the application and uh, subsequently open the account. Uh, we are currently working on uh, eKYC uh, e auto account opening, which would be the the target being uh, elimination of uh, forms uh, with respect to funding uh, as our clearing member is cop uh, so uh, we have an account uh, at uh, the cop bank and uh, the details are on our website and uh, in the forms so uh, it's it's a it's a pretty straightforward process and uh, the funding is reflected uh, pretty much uh, instantaneously, especially if uh, deposited uh, through uh, MPESA. So uh, before we delve into securities lending and borrowing, uh, I thought it, we, we thought it prudent uh, at this juncture to, uh, demo, to do the demo. So this is a trade test environment. And uh, we trade on a platform called Avento. And uh, this is uh, what a, a client would see upon logging in. So there's a 16th uh, December equity contracts, 16th December KCB contracts, and uh, 16th December uh, Safaricom contracts. I'm not too sure uh, what tabs uh, the clients would be, would be would be available to them, but uh, there's a risk. Uh, there's a risk uh, tab, as shown here. So this is for the live 
for the live market and uh, for a, a given client for example uh, we have here uh, Gordon uh, Sunga uh, we can see uh, his balances so what, when you log in uh, and you check at, on your risk uh, on, on your risk tab uh, Gordon here has a, a margin balance of uh, 28,820. So this is given by the initial margin of 26,200 plus 10% uh, of, of, the, of the initial margin. This is the additional margin. So giving him a total of uh, margin uh, balance of 28,200. Uh, today he had uh, variation margin, a small loss of uh, 1970. So you can see the total exposure uh, that uh, the client has is 220, uh, 580. So from uh, an, in, uh, putting up 28,000 uh, shillings, 28,820 shillings, this client is able uh, to have a uh, exposure of close to 10 times uh, close to 10 times what what they have put up so small uh, movements in price uh, it, the client can profit greatly can I, everyone see the exposure this is the equivalent of uh, in in our previous example uh, the 42000 times uh, the 1000 shares so the summation of uh, all the positions, the thousand times uh, times the shares, comes to this uh, this value here, and uh, of this uh, the client has been required to put up twenty eight thousand. So uh, the leverage here is seven point nine. So the client father has uh, thirty seven thousand in the account, and uh, so they can have uh, an additional uh, close to. 300,000 uh, in exposure at the, at the moment. Looking uh, at an, another client, uh, we look at uh, Beryl, uh, Beryl Chapkorir. So by hovering on, the, on this eye, you can see the client details. So the market is derivatives, the broker is AB, ABC, and uh, then there's the contact details and uh, the contact person. So as you can see here, there's a risk category. So they're in risk category three, uh, which is moderate. Uh, for, for this client, uh, her margin balance is uh, 39, 930, given by the initial margin of 36, uh, 300, and an additional margin of 3,630. This client again today, the market went against her by 2000 and uh, her exposure is 260. So for this client, uh, her leverage is less than uh, for, for Gordon, maybe because uh, her contracts are more pricey. The initial margin for the contracts are more pricey. Uh, Brian, a question, uh, how low, mm -hmm. how much of a loss would she have to make before a margin call? We usually monitor this uh, very closely. Uh, margin call uh, essentially means uh, you've depleted your cash balance. So this, uh, if you look at her cash balance, it is 17,830. Uh, the surplus deficit shows uh, what her balance was yesterday. So you can see already it's uh, gone down uh, by, by the, by, by the 2200 22 uh, she lost today. So uh, as soon as uh, for a client like this, uh, once we we, uh, we see the cash balances uh, getting towards 5K thereabouts, uh, we would begin engaging and uh, inquiring uh, as to what uh, her thoughts on the position are, uh, her thoughts on the market and whether she'd be able to top up, uh, top up the account uh, through margin call or uh, alternatively if, uh, uh, she's changed her mind uh, if she would prefer for us uh, to try and close out the position uh, as profitably or yeah as safely as possible for her. 
So uh, for direct market access clients, it, it would be very important to keep a close eye on uh, your cash balances and the surplus deficit. And there's usually projected uh, during the day uh, what the effect will be. So throughout the day, you can have a real-time sense of uh, how the settlement will, will be, which will guide you for the next day. Because we said uh, the market settles uh, on the next day, T plus one. So by, by 10, the market has settled. So it really uh, means uh, the client has to be quick uh, with respect to margin calls or uh, decision making. Okay, a couple of questions. First, is the exposure uh, the amount she stands to lose or the amount she stands to gain? That's from Joseph. In our worked example, uh, she wanted 5,000 shares, right? So this 5,000 shares of Safaricom at uh, 42 shillings would be uh, 21,000. I mean, 210,000, sorry, 210,000 Kenya shillings. That is what we call exposure. We, it is the, what is the equivalent on the, on the normal market? So uh, here uh, the client has, uh, the client has uh, positions uh, equivalent to uh, having spent 21, I mean, 210,000 on the normal market. So that is essentially what exposure is. For one contract of Safaricom at uh, 42 shillings, uh, the exposure is uh, 42,000. Remember, uh, one futures contract is equivalent to 1,000 uh, shares. So by purchasing one contract, it's equivalent of purchasing 1,000 Safaricom. And that's the beauty of derivatives. So uh, as you can see, our clients here, uh, with 40,000, they have a position of uh, 260,000. And in the previous example, uh, about 220 from uh, about uh, 28,000. So that is the beauty. You can make uh, a lot of money uh, without having to put up too much initially if, if, if you're savvy. Does the system show the duration of the contract, e.g. when it's expiring or if it's just beginning? Yes. So. Uh, this is the normal market. This is the uh, single stock uh, futures part. Uh, and you can see uh, ABSA, uh, you have December expiry, March expiry, June expiry, and September expiry. Uh, BAT, the same. Uh, so December, March, June, and uh, September. Remember, uh, in our example, Safaricom, March was, uh, at 5,000, so the price is still at 5,000. September contract expired uh, uh, when we had our last uh, discussion. And uh, immediately the next day, September 2022 uh, contract came into play. As you can see, there's, there's, so far there's no trade on the September contract. The, uh, the market tends to uh, trade like that. Uh, the far contracts uh, have less um, interest than uh, the, the near ones simply because uh, it's too far into the future. Uh, few people are, have a view of where the market will be one year from now, but people would have a very uh, strong view of say where Safaricom would be uh, in December as evidenced by uh, the open interest of uh, 552 uh, contracts. Uh, on transactions, uh, looking at uh, mm, Beryl, so she has uh, the following uh, positions. So the exposure is the summation of uh, all these uh, uh, positions. So uh, she's uh, short Safaricom. So uh, short, uh, the negative sign means uh, they're short. So sh she's short Safaricom December, uh, ABSA December, and uh, March Safaricom. And uh, she's long uh, December, uh, EABL, March ABSA, and uh, December equity. So these are the positions she currently holds. So uh, for a client, uh, you should be able to see uh, your positions uh, uh, on this tab. Uh, further, you can be able to see uh, your trades for the day. Uh, okay, so it seems uh, Beryl didn't trade today. 
maybe you can look at uh, hmm, okay okay let me see who traded today yeah so we can see those uh, for this client SZJ 676 uh, uh, there was one trade uh, he traded uh, he went short at 47.23 uh, which contract is this? You can see the contract, which is March uh, 2022 KCB. So uh, you'll always be able to see your orders uh, on this tab. Uh, you'll be able to see your trades, uh, what has actually executed on this one, and uh, you'll, you'll be able to see your positions uh, that, you, that you've carried over on this particular tab. Uh, Brian, someone is asking what, what you mean when you say short and long. Okay, uh, apologies for the jargon. That is uh, simply uh, short is sell and long is buy. So uh, uh, for uh, derivatives, you can take a position uh, uh, basically to profit if uh, the price drops. So, so this client uh, has positioned themselves if the price drops uh, for December, Safaricom, they would stand to profit if the price goes up. Uh, uh, they would uh, lose money. It is just the uh, jargon for derivatives. Instead of uh, buying and uh, selling, we say, because you're taking positions, you say uh, you're taking a long position or uh, a short position. So these are the various tabs uh, the client would be able to see uh, their position and uh, uh, what they've done during the day. And uh, uh, Let's uh, go to the trading environment to see how the, the client actually uh, is able to trade. So uh, given uh, this, is the, this is the test environment, uh, we have uh, set up a few clients, We've set up Peter and, uh, Peter and Janet. So Peter's uh, account is given by LYQ503. And uh, we have uh, Janet, whose account is given by DWA uh, 566. So we should be able to uh, demonstrate a transaction between the two parties. Uh, for our case, uh, we will uh, ignore the fact that uh, these prices are a bit old. So uh, let's uh, assume they want to enter Janet was uh, a buyer and uh, Peter was a seller. So for the buyer, uh, they wanted to transact on uh, Safaricom December. So uh, you can see the initial margin uh, is given by 44,000. So that would mean the additional margin would be at 10% of that. Assuming they have funds in their account, uh, the two parties can be able to trade. Uh, for Janet, she would log in and uh, come and click buy. So she wants to buy uh, five contracts of Safaricom. Uh, she would input, so the principal is uh, the party now uh, trading. This is Janet, so you should input her code. Uh, there'll be a drop down, and you can see her name, Janet. So she wants to buy uh, five contracts at, uh, let's say she's happy with uh, 32.9. So she'd click buy. That's essentially what uh, she would do. And uh, the, the order should have uh, appeared uh, on, should have appeared uh, here. She would be able to see an increase at five at 32.9. Uh, unfortunately, it seems uh, our, our test environment, uh, someone has shut it off. Uh, Brian, but, before you continue, how much money mm -hmm. did she have to put up for the trade? We're just continuing with the with our example, uh, Peter and Jen, Janet, I mean, where she walked in with the five thousand, with fifty thousand. But uh, absolute minimum uh, amount would be uh, twenty five thousand plus uh, five thousand uh, plus transaction cost plus. Uh, house margin. So 
this I think this is less than thirty thousand. So if she had walked in with thirty five thousand, she should have been fine for the whole five five uh, five contracts. Okay, so instead of the two hundred and ten thousand she would need in the normal market, she would just need thirty five thousand to take the same yeah, position. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, apologies for that, uh, but uh, I think the most uh, pertinent thing would be how to place the order. Uh, you can you can uh, do plus minus uh, on the quantity number of contracts uh, that the party wants to uh, to trade. Uh, you can change your price. Maybe uh, Janet really really wants to buy those shares. She may decide that she wants to trade at a higher price. So you can uh, input uh, uh, at a different price. So her order value, uh, as you can see, it has changed. If you increase uh, the number of shares, you can see the order value will change here. And uh, in the live market, your risk could also be available here. So as you increase your contracts, you see a declining balance on your risk, uh, showing you the maximum number of contracts that you can take up. Uh, so this is uh, automatic. You don't need to do anything there. Good till time. Also, this is just normally till end of market. So you don't need to change anything. Uh, uh, again, order type, there are various order types. But uh, for the most part, uh, it, you just click on uh, normal, a normal order, and, uh, and then you submit your order. So if you click by it, uh, you can see here on the top right of your screen, it shows that the contract is closed. Uh, but uh, typically in the live market, you'd see your order on the board at the price that uh, you, you've requested. In the live environment, you can see a few uh, orders on the board. So you can see someone wants to buy June at uh, 51, uh, 51, June equity, uh, 2022. You can see there's two uh, shares there, Safaricom. You can see someone wants to, wants to buy three shares at uh, 4204 for December. And someone is willing to sell at 4205, I mean 4285. So if uh, for, for the executions that you can see, that means the, the price of the buyer and the seller uh, were the same. So they could match. So in our scenario uh, for Peter, uh, Peter is willing to sell. Uh, he can place his order, say at 33, hoping uh, that the, the other client would come up. So as uh, having input uh, his order, you can see LYQ 503. Peter can confirm his name that it, uh, before submitting the order. Uh, Peter had 10,000 uh, shares. Maybe uh, the motivation for him is to hedge. So uh, he could place an order uh, for, for 10 contracts. Any questions? Uh, yes, there are a couple of questions. Uh, firstly, when you say um, the December equity, buying a December equity, uh, you mean the person will have to wait until December to buy or how does the date come in? These are the expiry dates. So uh, when, when we talk about uh, 16th uh, December 2021 Safaricom, that means that uh, this contract expires uh, on 16th December, 2021. And then the line security is Safaricom. So in our act example, we had uh, dealt with the 17th March, 22 uh, Safaricom. So uh, I, I, I don't want to belabor this because I think we went through uh, previously uh, how, 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 how they're named. So this is a, uh, intraday market so what this means is uh if you buy uh june 22 at 5155 you can immediately place uh, an order to sell at uh, 
52, for example, within a, a second. So there's, you don't have to wait uh, till June uh, for, for the payoffs, but that is when the contract expires. So you can uh, enter and uh, exit the market multiple times. Okay, and someone is asking what the letters B, G, O, X, R mean. Ah, so uh, this, uh, this is a depth of market. So you can see like uh, where the other orders are. So you can see there's someone at 51, the, here there's, in this example for equity, there's someone at 51, zero, zero, there's another uh, seller at 52. Uh, much like uh, on the normal market, you can see the prices at which people want to buy and sell. So that would be uh, D. A graph uh, would be just a normal chart. Options, we don't have options uh, at the moment and neither do we have spreads. And uh, for R, uh, it's not pertinent to us. So uh, for, for, for a direct market access uh, trader, the only uh, thing maybe would be knowing how to uh, gauge the depth and uh, maybe a graph. Those are the two that uh, we, we need at the moment. All right, and what time does the market open and close in the derivatives market? Uh, from nine to from nine to three. So it opens earlier than the normal market. And uh, can someone protect themselves from foreseeable losses? Mm, yes, so uh, in, in uh, the example I was uh, giving uh, for uh, Peter, who already owns the Safaricom shares, uh, a motivation for him to trade would be to hedge. So uh, let me just see uh, if uh, the order will go through. Maybe uh, the client wants to hedge at 33 shillings. So it's still still not going through. Let me let me let me try uh, log in again. So mm, just bear with me a second. Yeah, we're, we're, we're uh, out of luck, uh, unfortunately. Uh, we'll, we'll do a small, uh, video on the same and uh, uh, add it to our YouTube page on the actual trading. So just keep a lookout on, uh, for that and uh, we'll, send, we'll send it uh, as soon as we can. But yes, so uh, a key motivation uh, for using derivatives, the ability to protect against uh, adverse price movements. Uh, so uh, if you already own the shares rather than uh, selling the shares and uh, incurring the, uh, Two 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 percent uh, commission uh, charges. Uh, you can uh, decide to uh, hedge yourself on the derivatives market at a fraction of the cost. And uh, upon expiry, uh, maybe a, a counter like Safaricom, you don't want to sell outright because you think long term it will still go up. But uh, in the interim, maybe you can see maybe there'll be some adverse price movement. So you can come and uh, hedge as I was demonstrating uh, for the case of Peter, you, whatever amount of uh, contracts you, you hold in Safaricom, uh, for example, you divide by a thousand. So if you ho have um, 5,000 uh, Safaricom uh, shares, you'd come and uh, short uh, and come and place a sell order on the derivatives market. Yeah, and then put uh, your, your details. So for Peter, it's LYQ. And uh, if this matches, basically uh, you've um, protected yourself uh, from the risk of uh, Safaricom dropping because as, as the normal uh, shares uh, drop in price, your position on the derivatives would uh, generate profit. 
and it would uh, essentially cancel out. Okay, uh, in the interest of time, if you have any questions, please either put up your hand or write them in the chat and Q&A. Okay, so um, we were supposed to touch on uh, SLB as well. So uh, let, let me just quickly go through that. Uh, so uh, securities lending and bordering. So this is uh, the temporary transfer of securities uh, from a lender to a borrower at a fee. Uh, with a simultaneous uh, agreement that uh, the securities will be returned. So this is something uh, the C CDSC is rolling out and they are one of the uh, first uh, agents on the same. So you can be able to access this through us. So the eligible uh, securities for lending are uh, the constituents of the NSC 20. So some of the features of, of, of the market is that Anyone who has shares can lend, but not everyone can borrow. So to, in order to borrow, you would need uh, approval from your agent. Uh, collateral, you'd have to put up collateral uh, because uh, as, as, as I said, the shares have to go back. So to the uh, original, to the lender. So in order to protect uh, themselves, there has to be collateral and the acceptable collateral is cash, government bonds and bank guarantee only. Uh, so you'd place your order as uh, we'll demonstrate at a later date, similarly to the derivatives. So you'd place a bordering request and as a lender would place a lending request and uh, they would match if, yeah, they would match. So for this, uh, the settlement occurs uh, on the day after expiry. So the eligible securities are ABSA at the securities in the NSE 20 share index, which are widely available. This information is widely available. So I just wanted uh, to look at uh, some of the payoffs uh, for a client, uh, for our client Peter, who uh, maybe decided uh, in order to increase income, uh, he's willing to lend his uh, shares at, uh, so he's willing to lend at 7.5%. Uh, assuming uh, there's somebody willing to borrow at that price, and the, sh the price at that time is uh, 42 uh, shillings. Uh, so the contract is being initiated in October uh, for March uh, expiry. So again, in our example, uh, March, in March, the price is 43 shillings. So uh, here, Peter would have made a profit of 10,000 shillings on uh, capital gains and also would receive a, a fee of uh, 15,750. Uh, so this would bring his total uh, gain to 25,750, which is riskless uh, profit for, from his perspective. Someone is asking how, how does the lending affect the portfolio valuation of the lender? Uh, it, it should not affect uh, the valuation uh, the portfolio valuation of the lenders. So uh, for Peter, uh, right now he has uh, 10,000 shares. Uh, he can opt to lend either the whole 10,000 or uh, lend 5,000 or whatever amount uh, he's comfortable with. And uh, so uh, that amount uh, will be held, uh, give this, given that there's collateral, the, the shares would move from uh, Peter's account, say to, Janet's account, for example, if Janet was the counterparty and uh, cash uh, from Janet would be held. And on um, March, uh, Janet would be required uh, to give back the shares as, uh, uh, as well as any uh, corporate actions. All right, George, go ahead. What, what is, why would I want to borrow shares? What do I gain as, a, as an individual? Yeah, so uh, motivation uh, to borrow. So yes. uh, uh, I would have loved to be able to take you through the workings, but assuming uh, Safaricom, for example, uh, you think uh, the press is going to go down uh, after, they recently had dividend payment, right? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, dividend the book closure. So before book closure, it was trading at 45, about 44, above 44.50. You can borrow the shares, 10,000 uh, 
shares, uh, sell it at uh, say 4450. And uh, uh, assuming after book closure, you expect uh, the price will drop by more than the dividend, which it did. So you could have bought back uh, at 4050. Uh, so you, uh, you can see that there's a uh, four shillings uh, times the amount of shares you borrowed, that would be your profit because you return the shares and you keep the, the, the difference. So you would uh, have the four shillings, but you'd also have to pay the, the, the whoever the lender the dividend, which was uh, one shilling 50 cents. So you're still uh, in a profit of uh, 25,000 shillings. So you borrow if you expect the prices to drop, you borrow and sell. All right, uh, Joseph, go ahead. Okay, my question is, uh, in the derivatives market, so essentially the prices are not, the prices of the, the share prices, they are independent of the, of the share prices now on the real-time markets. Uh, they're, they're linked because uh, uh, the underlying uh, is, is, the, is the normal market, uh, the spot market. So the, for example, you can't uh, totally delink, uh, say, Safaricom from uh, futures from Safaricom uh, on the on the spot market because it is it is almost like taking a view. Of where do you think Safaricom will be in June, or where do you think it will be uh, in December? So if you can't go buying uh, futures at uh, say sixty bob at the moment, so. Uh -huh. It, it it would force them to be uh, close. So, but they so but they, can there be a difference? Y yes. So, uh, uh. For example, uh, if uh, if you recall uh, those uh, rate cap, right? Yeah. Rate cap for the banks when it was being lifted, you could mm. have expected the the prices for the next year would be much higher than. The spot market, so you could see the futures trading at a premium. Ah, okay. Yes, but still, you see, the underlying is uh, the expectation of future price. Yes, yes, yes. All right, I think we'll take uh, maybe a few more questions and then we'll close. Uh, so, uh, Dismas is asking if uh, you can trade on an app or it's just web based. Web based, at the moment. but we're looking to add it to our DigiTrader, which I know will be soon. I think it'll be in a, a couple of weeks, maximum three weeks. All right, and uh, I think that's it actually in terms of questions. So we'll close. We'll also be sharing the recording, just just in case you want to go through it again. Um, otherwise, any closing remarks from you, Brian? No, just uh, thanks to everyone uh, who's uh, taken the time to join us. And uh, we look forward to making money together. Yes. Great. And uh, we'll be sending an email out. And uh, we're always here to support you. If you do decide to open an account, yeah, we won't leave you to do it on your own. You can always talk to our traders and get more guidance. All right. Thank you, everyone, and have a great evening. Thanks, Brian, as well. Thank you.